எங்களுடைய பலவீனமான காரியங்கள் நாங்கள் இந்த மாம்சத்தை விட்டு எடுபடுவது பெருமைகள் பாவமான காரியங்கள் மன்னிக்க முடியாத காரியங்கள் பாவ பலவீனங்கள் அதனால ஒவ்வொன்றும் நாங்கள் கொடுப்போம் அது மட்டும் இல்லாத படி இந்த spoken every word which came out of his mouth it is that being when he said let there be a sun there was sun let there be a, let this let the water move to a side everything was was created by through his word and through his power now you and me are our worshiping are you and me are created by that awesome that powerful god like that omnipotent god that means he is almighty god there is nothing there is nothing or no one can stand before in his power you know when i say that among all this creation that you and me are the the best creation because in everything when he created he just spoke a word it came to be a being but when he want to create you and me uh bible says in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that created upon the earth so you know what a privilege creation we are when he created all those animals and the birds and all the other things he never created in his own image but that you and me are created in in his own image and in in his own likeness he created you and me in his own image in his own likeness and uh, when you go down to verse 26 is this in his image he created you and me what a blessed people that you and me are because when sometime when uh, someone who do not know the god or some atheist someone come and ask you and me how does your god looks i should able to say he looks like me not by just you know that the physical point even in my in a spiritual way this is what my god looks like this is what my god represent because you and me not only his image in his likeness what a blessed people we are and then um, when we when we see when we come down to genesis chapter 2 verse 7 what a wonderful way because he never breathed the spirit into any of the other creation but the bible says in the uh, genesis chapter 2 7 and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul he he breathed his spirit in our life and you and me be- became a breath of life that means his spirit dwells in my life his spirit that's what even paul says of the same spirit who raised jesus christ from the dead it dwells in your life and in my life so how much you and me are to able to live a victorious and a conquer life because his spirit dwells in me i may face challenges the things may come can come against me but his spirit is lives in me that means that means he lives in me i can be a more than overcomers i can overcome this i can overcome the situation i can overcome these challenges because his power dwells in my life you know when we read the second part of that uh, john chapter 1 verse uh, chapter 1 1 to 3 it is less ex- uh, the right the john write about that uh, is he is saying that jesus christ is eternal he was he is and he will be because he said the beginning was a word the, the word, word was, was with god with god and the word was god that was god the same was in the beginning with god so he just explain about that that you know Christ is eternal 
and you and me are worshiping the same, same powerful God. The one who created everything, the one who owns everything, even though when we think in the world, the enemy may think that at this moment he is owning this world, but this world is belongs to him. It is, it is the sin when entered in the world that we gave the enemy the dominion and the authority. But you know the best, most powerful thing what Lord has done in our life to the world is his, the gift of salvation. He has created everything in the, in the world he has, through his mighty power. But the greatest power in my life, what he has done is when he came down to this world, as a servant, he paid the price. He died on the cross. And through, his, through the death on the cross, through the blood, then my sins have been washed away. And I can live a, con a victorious life through his power and through his resurrection. That's the greatest power which God revealed in my life. Of course, he provided me all the other things for me to live in this world. But for me, I take it, the greatest thing what he has done me is my all-knowing, my, my all-powerful God done in my life is, in your life is, I strongly believe he gave himself for me. He gave, that's a you know, wonderful way. Like when we, when we come down in our Paul explain, he gave himself, no one forced upon him. He knew very well that without that sacrifice, without his death on the cross, without the power of the resurrection, I have no hope. Everyone who's sitting here, we never had any hope because our life would have been going direct to the hell. But his love, his love, his unconditional love came down to this world, did the greatest thing on this earth. Of all his creation, all the wonderful things done, the greatest thing he's done in my life is he gave himself for me. He died for me. And now that you and me are worshipping that living God, that omnipotent God, that mighty God, that El Shaddai, that you and me are worshipping this evening time. You and me are bowing down to that mighty God this evening time. But we, we just next five ten minutes if you look back in that authority that you and me are living in this world you know many challenges comes in my life i should first remember to myself i should remind myself who is my father is and what he has done in my life my god my father is a omnipotent god and he gave himself for me. He gave me the gift of salvation. I don't need to be worried. I don't need to be, you know, fear of. I don't need to be, you know, disappointed of the things. Because when he has taken my hand, when he is, you know, directing me, if I follow him with my whole heart, he will direct me. No matter what comes, my omnipotent, my almighty God is, you know, walking with me. My good shepherd is, you know, directing my path. The only thing is, only thing is, as Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. You and me should learn to listen to his voice. Many a time we fail to listen to the voice because we think, oh, there are some other power in this world. Some other things are in the world can help me better than, you know, that great power. Many a time that I look back in my life, if I see, if I examine myself, that the place I failed, it is because I failed to acknowledge who he is in my life. You know who he is in my life because he is a he is a mighty God. He is the one who gave himself for me. If you read uh, John 15 verse 13, you know his awesome love, his powerful love, his unsacrificial love, he's been manifested in our life. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You know, he, he, you know, said, you know, another verse he says, I'm not calling you as a servant, I'm calling you as my friend. What a privilege with the people we are. The almighty God, the omnipotent God, he's saying, hey, you are my friend, and I love you so much, and trust me in every part of in your walk in your life, in every situation in your life, you trust me. And Galatians uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 4. Now. Oh, 
who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. Mm. See, he was, according to the will of his Father, he was obedient unto the the you know to the calling of the father when we say john chapter one in the beginning was the word the word was with god he was dwell in the you know in in the heavenly places but he came down to this world he gave himself and obedient unto the father that's a mighty god that you and me serve so one more word my ephesians chapter five two you know like what I'm just talking about that the greatest things what God, our great God had done in my life is he gave himself for me. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. So this is walk in love, walk in that authority, walk in that power as Christ walked in this world. Because when he came to the world, when he lived, he walked in the authority of the Father which is given him. And when I say that, that I am a child of God, Paul writes the vision is saying like, walk in the same love, walk in the same authority, walk in the same power. Because when I say that I am a child of God, when I say that he, I have, I have received him as a personal savior, yes, you know, Christian walk, challenges can come. Paul gone through many, many challenges, many, many things in his life, but yet he never took his eye upon the calling which he was called for. He never diverted his focus away from him. You know, many a times in our life, when the challenges comes, when the situation comes, we took our focus away from the Almighty God. That I don't know about most of you, but I many a times took my eyes away from that, you know, the, the, the power of that Almighty God. It ends up, what happens, I end up most of the time, not most of the time, all the time, it's, I end up in failures. I end up in, in defeat. Because today that, you know, God is calling you and me, you know, to be an, you know, example for that almighty God in this world. You know, I'll see one or two examples from the Bible. When, when God calls the people, how do they respond and how God responds to them? Judges chapter 6, we all know, we all know uh, this person very well. And Gideon, Gideon was what he was doing in the, uh, in the in the in the in the chapter six. He was hiding with the Midianites. He was afraid. And when the angel of God when he appeared to him, you know, if you can read from uh, chapter from six from from eleven to fourteen. And there came, and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was an offer that pertained unto Joash the Abias right. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Amen. So, he was afraid and he was hiding. You know, many a times in my life, how many times that I acted that kind of a, you know, a covered life. I knew, I, 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 I might have understood that God is with me, but when there's those situation arise, arise in my life, I went and hid myself. I don't want to go there. I don't want to be face a situation. You know, that's what he was, he was, he was, he, he was afraid. He was a fear of, fear of men. You don't know what will happen. When the Lord appeared to him and he asked him, him, hey, you, uh, you did not say you are a, a small person. What did he say? You are the mighty man of valor. Because one who created him knew very well what is inside, what is this capable of. But you know the next word, what is the response of this one? He says, oh, if you say the Lord is with that, what happened to all those miracles? Why we have to go through those situation? The next word, you know, the uh, the one, you know, like when I was meditating, you know, the God put in me at this one is he say, he's saying, you go and produce the miracle because I am with you. 
you go and produce a miracle why you are hiding you know god is asking many every one of us you know in in a, in a you know to be you know because our church has been called to be taken you know to bring to take his word to the people those who are unheard those who people are going through all the struggles and the pain those who are you know who been persecuted many things we are you know like we the mission field what we are doing i'm so happy for our church which many churches may not able may not they are not doing you know whenever i just uh, uh, go with the pastor i will in the meetings or when we go this one when we when we have a discussion they say oh you are able to support this many ministry it is like when we are not the people of fear here gideon was sitting in fear but god is saying oh you want to see the miracle you move out i am with you the same way god is asking you and me this evening time i am the almighty god that i am with you what is a miracle you need in your life it can be a spiritual miracle it can be whatever miracle you need is it don't be in fear move forward with faith step forward out of your comfort zone that i am going to with you the same word that he spoke to gideon he's saying you go and produce a miracle because i'm with you the same god is telling you in this evening you you and me this evening time you go that i am going to produce a miracle it is not your power it is not your strength it is not your wisdom it's not your knowledge that was the first week of the week we were talking about the the omniscience of god the knowledge and the wisdom of god it is not how you are going to work it is i am going to work through you what a privileged people you and me are and we see in the life of you know moses moses was uh, we all know the story of moses but when he was uh, when he was meet uh, when he was, when he when he met the god in the mount you know the first thing when god said you know if you see exodus chapter 3 if he if he keep uh, reading that you know god saying see i heard the cry of uh, the israelites and i have given the promise to the you know the your forefathers to abraham to isaac to jacob i will deliver them and he is saying that now that i'm going to send you so what was the what was the response of uh, moses moses saying the verse uh, chapter 3 and verse 11 saying who am i he come with all the you know the the excuses who am i that uh, that i i i'm going to deliver that the mighty man of because when the, in those days pharaoh was a very powerful person isn't it people met uh, had so much fear of him he comes with all the you know, i can't speak all those things but how does god responds and then finally he said if i go back to them because the israelites they know me and how will i what will answer that i'm going to say and what was the god response in chapter 14 uh, exodus chapter 3 verse 14 and god said unto moses i am that i am and he said thus shall thou say unto the children of israel i am had sent me unto you he, moses is asking that who am i that to go and the god respond was that i am the i am who's with you you know many a times in our life in my life and i say lord how i am going to do this am i the right person am i in the, am i have the st- strength or am i have the power am i have the wisdom that god asking me this evening time am i not with you am i not a omnipotent god am i not a powerful god am i not the god of victor he's asking you and me this evening time that same powerful god the same god who spoke to moses i am the i am the whom uh, i am who i am the same god is speaking to you and me in this evening time whatever the challenges comes in your life i am with you because i love you so much you are my precious that's what in psalm 139 when we when we read about psalm 139 from 13 to 16 i know he wonderful way he explained because he's saying you are fearfully wonderfully made and he says that you know you when you before you formed your mother womb i know you because everything everything was you know if you can read it that's a wonderful verse from 13 to 19 for thou hast possessed my reins 13 to 16 sorry thou hast covered me in them in my mother's womb i will praise thee for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well 
My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Then eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, mm. when as yet there was none of them. Yeah. Even there was none of them, everything is written about you and me in that book. What a mighty God that you and me sell. What an awesome God that you and me serve. Now, how we, you and me have to lead a victorious life in this world? How, what are the, when the challenges arise, how do I respond? You know, my courage, my courage in the Lord, I'm not saying the pride, my courage in the Lord should bring an uh, unbeliever to Christ. It's happened in the Bible, isn't it? The one example we know, we must meditate on this one is Daniel. Daniel was being not to ask to pray, but he was not afraid of anything. He knew that his Almighty God is with him, and he what he did, he did not even just go pray inside the room. He said, "You open the window, let the people see," because he is not subject to that authority. He is subject to the authority of that almighty so what happened so we all know the story that uh, in David threw him the lion's den the king did not have a good sleep that night and the early morning goes so he found that Daniel was well al alive he was nicely sleeping with that uh, other lion and then what happened all the other people were trying to ask accuse him put on that this one but then what that heathen king what the king who did not know about that this one he come out with a, a royal degree. Now what he says in uh, uh, Daniel chapter 6 verse 26. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel for he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. Amen. What a great witness is my life can produce that kind of witness in this world when the people look at me and say hey I want to know your Lord more I want to know your God more I want to know about his life more because the things what he's doing in his life the even those circumstances you are going through and how you are overcoming I know it is not with your own strength and power it is the power, something is in your life. I want to know more. The life of humbleness, the life of humility, the life of, you know, the strength, the life of power, the life, the life of love, you know, the, the sacrificial love. They, when these people see, they, sh they should say, they should, you know, come and ask, I want to know that love. I want to know that God. I want to know that person. Can, is it my life is, you know, reflect that omnipotence of the God in my life? When the people look at me and say, hey, I want to serve your God because he is mighty. See how he delivered you, how he provided you, how he transformed your life, how he transformed your family life, how he is helping you to overcome those struggles and the pain. I want to know that God is my life is representing that in this world. Even uh, Doni Bhagavad also when he was praying, he was just most of the prayer, Lord, I want to be an, an example, not by the word, by action. When the people should see, when they see, they should see that almighty God in my life. Even when David was, when he was fighting against the, want to fight against the Goliath, you know, whole, uh, you know, Bible says, when they hear, heard, they were afraid. Uh, when they heard the name of that uh, Goliath, they were afraid. And when they saw him, the whole uh, Saul army ran off. But when David went before that, you know, this one, he said, my, this battle is not belongs to me. It belongs to my almighty God. Did God give him a victory or not? God gave him the victory. Whose name was glorified? Is the name of the Lord was glorified. His name was, uh, his name was honored. How many times in our life that you and me have put our Lord's name down? I can say many a times, that I have put my Lord's days a name is done because the place where I have to stand before to be his witness, the fear catches. Oh, if I talk to my colleague, what they will think, or what my boss will think, or what is going to happen. But when other religion, many times when I see, when they they were not afraid. 
but I have a living God. The one who created the heaven and earth, when they themselves were standing to, uh, you know, to be a witness for a, just for an idols. So how much that you and me have to be a witness in this world for him. How many, how many, how many, this one. We have so many examples in the Bible. When Isaiah was, when he was being called, the first, this one was what he was responding. He was saying, I am a man of unclean lips. But when he heard, when he heard the voice, uh, if he, uh, I think we can. Uh, there's no time. When you read the, if you read the word, he said, "When we heard who is going, who I am going to send, his first response was, Lord, here I am, take me." When he was, when he was calling uh, Jeremiah, what was his first response? He was saying, "I am a youth, I am a child." But what God uh, gave him an answer is that, that I am with you. I am with you. If we can just, uh, we'll close with it. My Judges chapter 6. Uh, if you can read the, uh, no, sorry, not Judges. No. Jeremiah chapter from 1. If you can read the whole thing, you can read how God is encouraging him, how God is, you know, being with him. But if you can read the verse 18 and 19. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Amen. So when you read the chapter, in the verse 6, is even when God asked him, you know, his response was, Behold, Lord, I am only a youth. I am only a child. When the verse 9, the Lord put, put, uh, th then the Lord put forth, he had and touched my mouth. And Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my word in, in your mouth. So, the verse 10 he says, So I have, this day I have set you over the, set you over the nation and over the kingdoms. He's, he's saying, This day, I will put my word into your mouth. Now this evening time, that you and me, we have many examples, even uh, when, uh, how God transformed Paul's life. When he was, when he was on the way to Damascus, he asked him, Lord, who are you? And his answer was, the one whom you are persecuting, I am the Lord. Now when he came and with the encountered with the Lord, how God transformed his life, how God mightily used him for his kingdom. If I ask the same question, that every one of us in this room, that we all will say witness, I have encountered with the Lord. I have known him personally. But is my, reflect, is my life reflect that omnipotent God in my life? Every day my walk with the Lord. How do I respond? How do I see? How do I do the things in my life? Is that reflects a lot? Or when the, you know, like, it's during this fasting time, during this 21 time, my spirit are high. I'm just, uh, you know, just pumped up, you know, just, you know, flying with all the height. But when those, you know, goes down, my spirit will go slowly down. Am I becoming like that? Or, Lord, my Christ, Lord, this 21 days fasting, whatever I learned, whatever you are teaching me, whatever you are guiding me, Lord, let this should be and a permanent place in should be in my life. That I should be and witness for you. I should be used for your kingdom in a great and a mighty way because I am not serving an ordinary king or ruler of this world. I serve the omnipotent God, the almighty God, the one who gave himself for me, the one who rescued me the, from the eternal death, the one who gave me the salvation, the one who gives me a great hope that one day that I will be spending with him in eternity. If I take a long rope, a 10 meters rope, you know, like that life I'm living in this world, that rope may be endless, the life I'm living, living in this world may be just a 100 centimeter. I have a long life. You all, every one of us have a long life, live in eternity with him forever and ever. But the life what I live in this hundred centimeter will, will take me to that place or to somewhere else. But God wants you and me to be in the long rope, walk with him eternally. That's what he is called you and me this evening time. 
So Sarvatim Pranayta Deva, everything, everything is created by Him. He's calling you and me this evening time. He's saying, as I was with Moses, as I was with all the prophets, as I was with all the disciples, you know, like as I was with Paul, and also with the great, you know, people of God in the Bible. If you can, like, when you, uh, when we, when you read Hebrews chapter 11, it's talk about all the faith and all the, uh, you know, like, uh, because, you know, uh, many, uh, there, there is a place called Hall of Fame, and every house has a Hall of Fame, whether it's in the sports or in the art of this one, whether they keep the best one. So, you know, we, when we talk about the Hebrew 11, it says the Hall of Fame of the Bible. It talks about everything. We have clouds of witness. But now, more than everything, his spirit leaves you and me in this, this evening time. So that omnipotent God is calling you and me this evening time to, to walk with him. You know, to give everything to in his mighty hand. And he will make a great vessel out of this ordinary clay. The only thing is, if I'm willing to surrender, if I'm willing to give, if I'm willing to keep him in my friend, everything, in every moment, whether it is a good time, bad time, blessings, or difficult times, he should be my omnipotent God. He should be my almighty God. <laughs> Thank you.